If you're looking to lose at self-publishing, well, there's a number of things you can do to ensure that that happens. And that's one of the reasons why in today's video, we're gonna talk about three things to avoid in self-publishing. This is Chris Baird from selfpublishingmadeeasynow.com where self-publishing doesn't have to be so hard. So let's get straight into it. There are a number of things, we're gonna hit three of them, that you should definitely avoid. And the first one of these things is that you're spending too much time on things that don't move the needle. And when I say move the needle, there are a couple of ways of which we can move the needle. And that when it comes to our self-publishing. One of those things we can do is we're not driving audience. We're not bringing in people through marketing. We're doing activities that have no impact on the marketing side of a thing. The other thing we can do is any work that's on our books that isn't going to impact the overall sales of the book. This is another huge mistake that people make when it comes to self-publishing. And I'm gonna hit a couple of these. Like one of them would be the editing. You're going round after round after round after round. At a certain point, you reach that point where the editing is complete. I can tell you doing woodworking and you're dealing with making these little cars and things like that, there's a portion of it where you're gonna sand the wood. You're gonna to try to get it perfectly smooth when you're inside the little woodshed and you're trying to get these cars to look exactly perfect for the kids, right? And but at some point, it's smooth enough. So if you spend additional time trying to sand this car down, it's simply not going to be that much better. Your books are no different than that little car. At some point, your effort is being wasted. In fact, you have a certain amount of motivation and it goes down as we don't see results. So what we need to do is focus on the things that are gonna give us those results. A second thing you can do with regards to your audience is going on Facebook groups where other authors are sitting and just shooting books at each other. Nobody is buying other authors' books and yet they still have this idea that if I'm in a Facebook group, I can just post my books and other self-publishers will then purchase purchase all of these books. I can't tell you on TikTok, I get emails or get messages on a regular basis saying, hey, buy my book, buy my book. Why would I do that? I don't know, like, and trust you. How do you even know I like this kind of book? But just pushing it out there so many times, you think that somehow that's your target audience, but it's not driving traffic. It's not bringing in an audience, which means it's another one of these areas where we're spending lots of energy, lots of time. We feel like we're doing something and that's the danger side of all of this, but it's simply not going to result in more sales of the book or really a bigger audience that we have. Number two, listening to the wrong people. And this can go both ways. One of the things when it comes to your book, your cover, your title, all of these things, even the contents of your book, is you're going to be asking your family and friends, what do they think about the book? Now, some of you, and I know this from my one-on-one -on -one clients, some of them will tell me, my family says it's the most wonderful book they've ever read, so I can't wait to get it on Amazon because it's gonna sell so many copies. The problem is, is that our family and friends are trying to be encouraging and they also will see the positive side, or that's at least one way they could see it, right? Seeing the positive side of what we're doing, they're just really happy and excited because we're excited about it. And so when they read the book, they read it from the perspective, a very rose-colored glasses perspective, like, wow, this is amazing. Kind of like when the kids, the first time doing some drawings, you know, and you look at it, wow, this is just so amazing. They're a genius for their age, right? Except the problem is when it gets out to the main marketplace of Amazon, those are not your friends and family. So we need to make sure it appeals to them. They're our target readers. They're the ones that are gonna either be buying the book on a daily basis or crickets not touching our book. And so our friends and family can be helpful in some ways, but it's really hard to know whether or not listening to them can be helpful in this front. The other side is the negative side. You have maybe people in your life that are telling you as a self-publisher, an author, you know, or writer, you may have never published published or authored anything, but you've at least written something and they're telling you nobody wants to buy this. In fact, I had a client recently inform me that it was in some Facebook groups and they told them, oh no, you know, no, they told me that nobody would want to buy this material, this content that I'm putting out. But in reality, that is simply not uh, the case. They thought, oh, you needed lots of degrees and stuff if you're going to talk about something, right? I think the next thing I think about was a discovery session. I did a free discovery session and we were discussing this and I was saying, no, you do not need a doctor degree in these topics you're talking about. The average person really doesn't care. They want something that's going to help them with the problems that they have. So if you're helping people with their feet, 
they don't actually care as much as you might imagine. You might be thinking, well, I'm not a podiatrist. I don't, I'm not a foot doctor. So I can, what do I have to say? Well, I don't know. Maybe you've gone hiking. Maybe you've tried different shoes. You all have, you have something that you want to get out into the world. Maybe you have a story you want to get out in the world. And in reality, it doesn't even have to be that fantastic. 90% of the sales that are happening on Amazon are as a result of the marketing side and not as much of the content side. And so if your book is good, and, and, and I used to go back and forth with some commenters on YouTube on this exact subject, and it was the idea of, well, what do you mean by good? And I would say, look, if it's getting four and five star reviews, you're fine. If the average is over four stars, if it's getting under four, then we have to be cautious. If it's under three, it's not going to sell any copies. So your quality is too low. And now we need to put more focus on the next book. But if you're listening to the wrong people, you might just give up immediately, or you might have your hopes set too high, which brings us to point number three, a very important point you want to avoid. It is too high of expectations. As I was saying with the free discovery sessions, you should check out below in the comments where I go through exactly where exactly you are in the, in the journey for free and we take a look what the next step is. The thing is, is that during these sessions, sometimes I run across people who have these insanely high expectations. Like I'm thinking, you know, maybe a hundred I should books a day I'll sell or a couple hundred books a day. They don't understand that you don't have an audience. And until we've built up an audience, we really can't expect our book to go viral. The same would be true on Instagram or TikTok. You may be a lottery winner. You put your first little video or short out there and it just explodes but that isn't what happens to most people. So if I were saying, I'm gonna produce a YouTube video and it's gonna have five million views, well, how would I know that? Well, how many videos have you produced? Well, I haven't produced any videos. I haven't written any books. Well, then how exactly can you tell me that you know your book is gonna do so well? At the same time, don't tell me you think your book's gonna do poorly. It's dependent upon some of the things I'm gonna mention, I've mentioned in my, my other videos, where we go through exactly some of these steps to make sure you things you wanna get into alignment. I'm gonna be hitting on my next video as well, this exact subject of the things you shouldn't avoid but should be doing. So, but the thing is, is that as you're going through these steps, we need to make sure our expectations are reasonable. As a new author, you should expect that if you've optimized everything and if you've got everything perfectly and we're running ads against it, we should be seeing some sales, okay? We should be able to get some basic sales. If you're not getting sales, well, then we need to figure out what the problem is. And that's sometimes what we do with the one-on-one -on -one clients and my group coaching clients, going through and trying to figure out, like a doctor, going into your books and trying to figure out what do we need to change in order to get those sales to start coming in. Because usually it's a list, there's a list of about 50, 100 things. And often we find it really fast. We can, we can quickly diagnose what exactly the issue is so that these things can be fixed. And then we can either fix it in our future books, which is usually the case because sometimes it's demotivational. We don't want to do anything that would demotivate us. But sometimes we can fix it on the very same book. And just by changing the cover, the title, subtitle a little bit, we can start to see some sales coming off of our existing books simply because we're targeting a hungry market as opposed to targeting crickets or not even paying attention to the market, creating some weird vegetable that we're going to sell on a marketplace, having no idea if people want to, but our fam friends and family told us it was wonderful. They thought it looked really cool. But that really doesn't tell us if the market itself wishes to purchase that, you see? So these are like the three big things that you're definitely gonna wanna avoid. But my question for you is, what mistakes have you made that you wish you had avoided? It might be one of the ones I mentioned, or it might be something else. I wanna know below in the comments, so let me know about that. And check up above me here for another video where I'm going through your self-publishing questions. Thanks.